Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are on the Cube. We are here at UI Path Forward 2024 at the MGM in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside Dave Vellante, my co-host and analyst. We've got two guests for this segment. I'd like to welcome to the show Tanmay Hoshing. He is the engagement delivery leader at Deloitte. Welcome, Tanmay. Thank May. you. And Garrett Weissar, the SVP of product test automation at UI Path. Thank you both so much for coming on the Cube. Thanks for having us. I'm going to start with you, Tanmay. Talk a little bit about the partnership between Deloitte and UiPath and what the, the original impetus for it was. Absolutely. So we started the journey around, I'll say, a year back uh, when we wanted to significantly transform the way we do the test automation, specifically on the package technologies. I would say in the last 20 years, specifically when it comes to implementation type of engagements, uh, the penetration of test automation has been fairly limited because technology, the ROI which was generated was not as good. But now with the power of Genia, we are thinking that uh, the ROI is significantly better than what it was. And that's where we started investing into this technology using our strong forte, which has been institutionalized knowledge that through consulting we have gathered over I would say past 30 years, and we needed a very strong partner for automation, specifically with the test suit capabilities, and that's where we partnered with uh, UiPath to bring their strength, combine their strength with Deloitte's strengths, and bring a very powerful solution to the market. Why was the ROI somewhat muted, and, and why explain why Gen AI changes that equation? Sure, so uh, specifically in the space of test automation, uh, typically when you go on implementation ex uh, engagements, you would do a testing, I would say, three to four times manually. And if you want to have the, something built on automation, the effort it takes to build that automation, we're not significantly giving that saving compared to doing it manually. Now what it changes with Gen AI is the activities that lead up to the testing, right? From test script writing, test preparation, building of integration test scenarios, building of test data, all of that with ability of Gen AI, we are able to significantly accelerate that. That's part one of it. Second thing with partnership with UiPath, we have invested in building a predefined library of automation bots. And that is something that we give as an out-of-box solution to the engagements where we work. And that significantly saves the efforts to having to build them manually. And that's where the ROI comes in. So Garrett, I imagine, I imagine a, a pyramid where pre-gen AI, there was, at certain scale, there was an ROI, right? Uh, yes. Uh, but it was the tip of the pyramid. You had to be big, en big enough. And now you're sort of widening that, that aperture. Um, Maybe you could discuss the history of sort of test automation at, at UiPath and the sort of journey you've been on. Yeah, I mean, in general, so you said pre-Gen Gen AI, right? Yeah. Um, there was an ROI, but it never really took off. Yeah. And testing has been around for, what, 25 years? Oh, my yeah. I've been 25 years in that business. So um, it was hard to create automation and it was hard to maintain it over time. That's why typically customers have a low automation rate of like 30, 40% only. With Gen AI, now we are able to generate to, uh, test cases. We can create up to 90% automation rates. And that's truly what the customer needs. And that accelerates everything. I think that's mm -hmm. what you're referring to as well in, in terms of the efficiencies. So it's human labor you know, reduction, but it's also quality as well. That's Absolutely, right? right? Absolutely, and I can give an example. When typically if you write a tester to write the manual test cases, many of the times they miss out on thinking of the negative test cases or exceptional test cases. And that's where when we bring the power of Gen AI, we are able to do a specific prompt engineering which asks for along with the happy part test case, build those exceptional test cases. So that gives a very comprehensive test coverage. Another capability that we have built in, because which our clients ask, that do I need to test everything? If it is a package solution I am buying, I expect the product company would have taken care of those scenarios. Tell me what is important to test. And with, able, uh, with power of Gen AI baked in into the solution, we are able to tell uh, our clients what is critical versus non-critical, focusing their efforts, their energy on testing what is required and taking out something which is not required. So, so, so what is the upshot for the cu the customers that you're, that you're, as you said, you're able to identify what's critical, what's not critical, here's what you need to do, and then what is the upshot for them in terms of being able to have this this data from, from the testing? So I would say in terms of efficiencies, of course it frees up their internal resources quite a lot. It reduces a lot of back and forth cycles that they need to do as a part of whole validation process. And uh, there is another element which our customers quite often face. It is maintaining the library 
after the initial implementations are done. That is tough. And specifically when you have scenarios where you have a lot of business packages, multiple vendors coming in, usually it's a hard effort to maintain. But with everything brought into a one system or one test suit together, we are able to give them that ability. A lot of system discussion today. So because I think some much of the testing, correct me if I'm wrong, was compartmentalized. Ah, we can okay. automate this piece or that piece or this piece. Now you can automate end to end. That's true. Right? So, so how does that change the 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 uptake in with customers and the and the the business value? So we can automate literally any technology, right? So we can uh, automate end-to-end -end processes spanning five or six different systems, for example. Mm -hmm. We've been just talking about SCP systems here, right? Uh, but it usually involves several systems that the customers are, are testing in the end-to-end -end process. And you know what the beauty is now with, the, with all these SAP transformations? Most of these customers want to go back to clean core. And clean core means that they don't change that much, which means we have customers 93%, 95% clean core. You can generate a lot of the testing artifacts directly for the customer without you know, having customizations or any heavy lifting on the automation. So that is a huge value for the customer, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, no custom mods, uh, right? You're sort of eliminating yes. those sort of custom modifications, which, like you say, it becomes fragile because you got to maintain them, and then that just blows the whole thing apart. Um, and, nice and so you, you, you mentioned SAP. It, do you have a, a specialization around uh, SAP specifically or ERP generally? I would say it is much suited for package technologies, so SAP, Workday, Oracle, um, ServiceNow, because the advantage with package solution is that usually your standardization is very high compared to custom development. Because standardization is high, we bring our Deloitte specific uh, libraries which are kind of like reviewed by experts, know that it has uh, verified content. So that's where the, it fits very well with package technologies. So we have our framework called as Ascent Framework. That is something that we have built over all the institutional knowledge we have. And that's what we use to uh, help our customers accelerate their journey. So we started this conversation by talking about how difficult it was to find ROI in this and how, and that, therefore how slow uptake was. Uh -huh. How does this change those dynamics and particularly in terms of customers finding value and finding efficiencies? Sure. So uh, first thing, right, in terms of writing of the test scripts, it was earlier completely manual efforts. Now with Gen AI, we are having a significant effort take out of that part. So that increases the ROI. Second is the pre-delivered bot library. Earlier bots had to be manually developed. Now with a bot library, which is pre-delivered, for the standard transaction, they don't need to reinvest those efforts or building something. So it works better sometimes, in many of the cases, for manual efforts as well. The third one is with the autopilot. Autopilot of UiPath significantly accelerate time it takes for us to build a bot. Earlier, it used to be quite a lot time-consuming exercise. Now we are able to do it much faster. The next one is the auto-healing capabilities of UiPath. It has been, I mean, first time build is still okay. Maintaining the bots was very, very effort-sensitive activities. But now with the auto-healing capabilities that UiPath brings forward, that effort goes down. So all of these, one thing added together, it generates the overall ROI for the customers. So if we fast forward, let's say, you know, five to seven years, uh -huh. with, with, as Agentic actually becomes mature, and more real. Today it's, you know, aspirational. What will change in the world of testing, in your view, as that agentic is, there's no end state, but closer to an end state. So five years is, is almost too long. Yeah, exactly. And, I was thinking the same thing. the pace, <laughs> yeah. things yeah. are changing at the moment. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable to see more than two years ahead. Totally but agree. If you, if you ask what's going to happen. So testing is the one area that will be impacted the most by Gen AI. That already, analyst firm said that already a year ago. Right, so now we have the, the Gen AI capabilities like Autopilot for Tester which is a huge success. Now we're taking it up to the next level, which becomes agentic. And in agentic, it means more or less that you can solve complex tasks, not just a, a, a little help or assistance. It's you can ask, test all the new functionality that was released in the last sprint cycle, for example. And test, Autopilot for Tester will go and will find all the requirements. Will create the test cases for you. We'll automate them without you touching anything. We are getting very close to autonomous testing. 
which wasn't possible so far. But with Agentic, I think we will get to the autonomous state. So that's one of the early examples of, of basically eliminating humans from the drudgery of testing. Yes. But but also eliminating humans. I mean, so this is the thing. Daniel Dines has has gone to great pains to say there will always be humans in the loop. Oh, we always need their judgment, their understanding, their contextualization of this. So I hear it and I got a little nervous with the jobs dislocation question. How do you, when you are talking to customers about this and clients, how are you not giving <laughs> the, the testers hives? Because it's and, testing. Yeah. Everybody hates <laughs> testing. Well, <laughs> but some people do it for a living, and so so the question is how. Also, I would I would say around this one, right? There is so much of work we are just not able to do it because it's expensive. You see softwares, right? You run into softwares which are not most elegant softwares, and the vendor of that software is not able to update and make it elegant because it costs money. Think about it. If you are able to drop the software development cost to one tenth of what it is, they would go and do it. So the volume of work it will generate mm -hmm. will far outpace the number of humans that we can take out. Everyone will have more work than it is now because of all these automations coming together. The, I mean, I'm just kind of uh, very excited because there are a lot of elements of work which people don't enjoy doing currently because they have to do it because there is no other way to get it to the market without doing that kind of grunt work. We'll be able to do it. If you ask any developer between coding and testing, what do you want to do? They say, I want to do coding. If you ask a system designer, a functional consultant, as we call it on our world, between running a design workshop and testing the system, what do you want to do? He wants to run the design workshop. He wants to be with the client. So we will be able to create, I will say, more of happy experiences of workers in their whatever working years than having to do those components of work which they don't really enjoy and doing. that is not oh, nothing. Right, right. That really is not nothing because it, <laughs> that those kinds of small things, as you said, the things that just make you want to tear your hair out, yeah. are what cause burnout and stress yes. and, and, and work-related anxiety and depression. And so Something, if yeah. you are eliminating the, that drudgery, it could be really I'll, meaningful for people's job satisfaction. I'll and therefore retention and, and lots thing. of other things. Yeah. I just want to give one example, right? Typically when you work on life sciences client, you have to record the entire test scenario screenshot by screenshot. One screenshot, you take it in a wrong, you just miss the date section. You have to go and start from the Sorry. beginning. Okay. I mean, think about it. Someone has to do it four to so five times. Yeah. That person will not be your friend after doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and nano huh? testing is yeah. torture. Yeah, if you exactly. think about it, it's torture. You're doing the same yeah. thing over and over. Like like the same step-by-step -step instructions, that's for a human, that's, that's torture. So eliminating that, I think, will make their jobs better, yes. And they can focus on other areas. Testing is, is a true discipline. When you look to, uh, at a professional tester, they know exactly what they're looking for. They know how to find defects and, and problems in the software system. They have well-trained professionals, actually. So. Getting rid of that, I think is uh, we're doing them a favor, actually. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Absolutely. So how are the skills that are needed to be in this industry changing in the sense that, as you, as you said, it's a very disciplined, very focused, and obviously you can, you can use those things in a lot of different kinds of jobs, but because the, the machine is taking away a lot of those repetitive tasks, and therefore it's freeing up their time to do more creative, more innovative yeah. tasks. Oh. So how, are, how do you foresee the skills needed I would say, you know, I think it, will shift. it yeah. will shift. For me, it's always a comparison. Um, I, I talk with friends and some of them say, we will lose the capability to do this manually anymore or whatever. It's true, we probably will. But remember, there was a time where you had maps in the car, <laughs> but you had, or had I to don't open. I want to go back to that. <laughs> yeah. And then there was Google Maps, right? And all of a sudden, like, it became so much easier. You had navigation in the cars. I think technology will progress and we will become more efficient with it. You don't need the maps anymore in your car. They might be outdated, by the way, and so forth. So I think it will be similar with the skills Absolutely. that will yeah. shift. We will lose some of the skills, but we will get much better on top of the, uh, the skills and more precise, maybe more experts on certain areas and those kind of things. Spend less time getting lost. That's right, yeah, exactly. exactly. Not accounting for traffic, exactly, exactly. So, so last question, we're here at UiPath Forward. What are the kinds of conversations that you're having at lunch and in the hallway that are most interesting and exciting to you? So 
of course in the conversations that we had people are really excited to uh, it's specifically with me talk about the Deloitte's ascent test solution and the mature capability it brings or the ROI it generates on day one and I'm personally very excited about agentic AI and the conversations we are going to have as to how we can embed that agentic AI in the transformation we are doing so totally excited about it yeah how about you Garrett uh, there, there are two kinds of conversations that I really enjoy. I mean, the agentic stuff is exciting. That's that's fueling our daily work, right? But I, I love to talk with customers who are implementing our tools. Real world examples of customers who are getting value from what we have created more or less, right? They're using the tools, they give you compliments. Sometimes they have requests or questions, which is totally awesome that they do this. Um, but I think those, those conversations, they energize. Exactly. Excellent. Well, Tam Tamne and Gerd, thank you both so much for Thanks coming to the Cuba. Great thank conversation. You. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank I'm you. Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.